It is one of the most famous artifacts in the history of Middle-earth, a gem that is the pride of the dwarves who would discover it. But could it possibly have a much longer history, tying back to the earliest days of the world? Today on Nerd of the Rings, we cover the Arkenstone and whether or not it could have been one of the Silmarils. In 1999 of the Third Age, less than 20 years after being driven out of Khazad-dûm by Durin's bane, King Thrain I founds the Kingdom of Erebor under the Lonely Mountain. There they find a great jewel, the Arkenstone, the heart of the mountain. In The Hobbit, we are told, the great jewel shone before his feet of its own inner light, and yet, cut and fashioned by the dwarves, who had dug it from the heart of the mountain long ago, it took all light that fell upon it and changed it into 10,000 sparks of white radiance, shot with glints of the rainbow. Two centuries later, in 2210, having heard that the majority of Khazad-dûm's survivors had gathered in the Grey Mountains, King Thorin I decides to relocate, abandoning the Lonely Mountain. He takes the Arkenstone and his people to the Grey Mountains. The Arkenstone would reside with the King's line in the Grey Mountains for over 300 years. When the dwarves are once again driven from their home, this time by dragons, King Thror, the grandfather of Thorin Oakenshield, and the survivors return to the Lonely Mountain and the Arkenstone is home once again. After 160 years of incredible prosperity, Erebor is sacked by the dragon Smaug in 2770, and the Arkenstone is lost. For 71 years, it would lie among the vast treasure hoard of the Fire Drake. Finally, in 2941, Bilbo Baggins would come across the Arkenstone as he makes his way into the lair of the dragon. The Hobbit keeps the gem a secret from Thorin, who swears an oath to take revenge on anyone who would keep it from him. After witnessing Thorin's greed and unwillingness to negotiate with the men and elves, Bilbo sneaks out of Erebor and gives the jewel to Bard and Thranduil in hopes that it would avoid bloodshed. The value of the Arkenstone is incredible as we know it could be considered a 1 14th share of the entire massive treasure of Erebor. After the Battle of Five Armies, Bard places the Arkenstone on the breast of Thorin Oakenshield in his tomb. Nearly 1,000 years after it was first uncovered, the heart of the mountain is once again buried in the depths of Erebor. Now that we know the relatively brief history of the Arkenstone, we arrive at the big question. Could this gem have had a much longer and deeper history? It is described as a globe with a thousand facets, shining like silver in firelight, like water in the sun, like snow under the stars, like rain upon the moon. Could it be that this gem, which gave off its own light, was in fact one of the famous Silmarils? which shone with the light of the two trees of Valinor. As we turn our attention to this question, we will look at the cases both for and against this theory. Likely the most common and most compelling theory is that the Arkenstone is specifically the Silmaril of Mithros. After the War of Wrath and Morgoth's defeat, the remaining two Silmarils are taken from the Dark Lord, and Feanor's remaining sons, Mithros, and Maglor, driven by their oath, steal the Silmarils. Having finally taken possession after years of dark deeds in pursuit of the gems, their hands are burned by the Silmarils. In their despair, Maglor throws his Silmaril into the sea, and Mithros casts himself and his Silmaril into a fiery chasm. The theory goes that this Silmaril having been thrown into a fiery pit, would over 5,000 years later be found in the Lonely Mountain. What some hypothesize is actually an inactive volcano. Personally, I love this theory. The idea that a Silmaril would reemerge in the Third Age 
become the most important artifact of Durin's folk and play a huge role in The Hobbit. The idea that there would be yet another connective thread from the beginning of Arda to the Third Age is one that I and many others find incredibly intriguing. However, as much as I love this theory, I must acknowledge that the Arkenstone almost certainly is not a Silmaril. First, we are told that the Silmarils will not suffer the touch of evil or mortal hands. As we saw with Mithros, his evil deeds caused the Silmaril to burn his hand. We are never told of anyone being burned by the Arkenstone, even if their intentions were not pure. In addition, everyone we see handle the Arkenstone, dwarf, man, or hobbit, is mortal. The only mortal who successfully handled a Silmaril was Baron, who shortly afterward had his hand bitten off. Years later, when he recovers the same Silmaril, it is part of the Nauglamir necklace, so it's possible that he didn't touch the actual gem itself, nor did the dwarves who had stolen it. Another thing to consider is geography. While we don't know exactly where the fiery chasm was, we know that it would have been in Beleriand, where Mithros and Maglor took possession of the gems. As there is so much wanton destruction from the War of Wrath, enough for Beleriand to sink into the sea, it's quite likely that the Fiery Pit is indeed in Beleriand. This means that the Arkenstone would have had to somehow travel a great distance, and the Lonely Mountain would have had to have been volcanic, yet die out long before the dwarves settled there. Another very important point is that we are told the dwarves worked the stone into a multifaceted jewel. We know from the Silmarillion that the Silmarils are actually indestructible, meaning there's no way the dwarves could have altered its shape or chipped away at a jewel of Feanor. Finally, and perhaps the most conclusive evidence that the Arkenstone is not a Silmaril, comes again from Tolkien himself. Of the three Silmarils, we know that one dwells in the sky as the star of Earendil. When it comes to the one Maglor casts into the sea and the one that Mithros casts into the fiery chasm, Tolkien says they would remain lost until the very end of the world. As the Arkenstone pops up for a thousand years in the Third Age, having been wielded by many mortals and its location known for the foreseeable future, it is fairly safe to say that the Arkenstone is not a Silmaril. In the end, I still think this is a really fun theory, and it's interesting to traverse the implications of the Arkenstone being a Silmaril. As I've always said, the mysteries of Middle-earth are part of what makes it so interesting. The fact that Tolkien created a world with such depth and such incredible connections from past to future but also a world where some things are just their own thing or left a mystery make Tolkien's world feel so incredibly real. Are there other mysteries or theories of Middle-earth that you'd like me to cover here on the channel? Let me know in the comments. As always, I wanna say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make this channel possible. Tom DeBombadil19, Listen Me The Cinda, Mandu Pandu, Andrew Carlyle, The Mighty Mim, Sky Carcass, Slide Belts, Dane Ragnarsson, Salim Rahman, Zetrock, Berto Berg, Grand Strategy Nerd, Graham Derricott, The Dark Haired One, Wyland, Michael Wu, and Debbie. If you enjoyed the artwork in this video, check out the artists in the description and purchase prints of their great work for yourself. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing, and we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings.